In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to retouch a model's face using Adobe Photoshop. Now what I mean by retouching a model's face is simply just cleaning it up a little bit and trying to make it look the best that it possibly can without any imperfections. So what we're going to be doing here today is removing some of the spots on her face. We're going to be enhancing her eyes and her lip color. And we're also just going to soften her skin a little bit as well to fix up any pigmentation issues. The finished product will end up looking something like this. Okay, it's probably a little bit too saturated with color, so we can probably turn that down in the tutorial, but you can see that it is possible to clean up um, the face pretty well from the original. So let's get started. You'll need to open up your photo in Photoshop first of all, and I'd probably jump over to your layers panel first of all on the right hand side here and just break it out so we can see it next to the image. If you can't see this layers panel, simply press F7 or go to your window menu at the top and select layers. Now what I like to do is I like to keep an original copy of this um, image on my bottom layer. So I might give it a different name just by double clicking on it. And I'll call it model original. Click OK. Then I'm going to right click on this layer. And there will be an option to duplicate the layer. That just means it's going to make a second copy of this layer and just put it straight on top of it. So it's like having two photos, one on top of the other, and they're both exactly the same. I'm not going to call this one Model Original, I'm going to call this one Model Edited, because we are going to be editing this next layer. Okay, this bottom layer doesn't really serve any purpose until the end of the video, but we'll come back to that a bit later. For now, we're just going to be working on this Model Edited layer, so make sure you are clicked on that. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to clean up the spots on this girl's face. And to do that, Photoshop makes it quite easy. They've got a tool in the toolbox down the left hand side here called the Spot Healing Brush. It looks like a little band-aid with a little dotted loop over the top of it. If you hold your mouse down on that band-aid, you can see there's a bunch of tools we can use to remove spots. But we're going to keep it simple and just go with this first one here, the Spot Healing Brush Tool. It's excellent for removing small spots on someone's face or just small spots in general in your photo. Now I'm going to zoom in on her forehead to start with. So you can press Control Plus on your keyboard to zoom in or you can use the Zoom tool down here. Or if you're like me and have a mouse on hand, I'm just going to hold the Alt key on my keyboard and scroll up until I get in nice and tight around her forehead. Now once you've got this um, Spot Healing Brush tool selected, you can change the size of it by either going up the top here and adjusting the size of the brush, or the quick way to do it is use your square brackets, which are next to the letter P on your keyboard. If you press the left square bracket, your brush gets smaller. Press the, press the right square bracket and your brush gets bigger. Okay, so what I want you to do is make your brush a size that's going to fit over the top of some of those spots. You don't want to make it too small though, you want it a little bit bigger than the spots. So if you can see mine, it's going to be roughly this size. And all you need to do is go now and click on all the different spots. What Photoshop is going to do is it's going to look at the surrounding skin colors. And it's going to try and cover that spot up with similar colors to what's around it. Okay, so it's a pretty quick job. Just go around click, uh, sorry, quickly and click on all the different imperfections that you can see. Now some of them might involve the brush needing to get a bit bigger so that it does a good job. I'm actually going to do a few bigger ones around this section. I might even try and get rid of some of those little creases you can see on a the forehead there without it looking too fake. So you can see already that her forehead is starting to look a bit better. If we were to hide this layer, we're hitting the little eye here, you can see what the original looked like. And you can see what the new version looks like. I'm just going to scroll down and I will have a go at getting rid of some of the other spots I can see here. I will fast forward the video in just a moment um, because you don't need to see me doing all this. Okay, so I'll catch you once I've finished removing all these spots. All right, so I'm back again now, and I've only got one more spot that I really want to have a look at. Actually, a couple on the nose there, but it's this one just here. If I were to use the spot removal tool on this, it doesn't seem to pick it up overly well. It doesn't do a bad job, but it does make it look a little bit funny. 
Well, it's not too bad, but if you want, you can use some other tools. For example, uh, we can do the patch tool. What you do is just draw a box around the bit you want to remove and then drag that to a new section that you can cover that with. So you can go left or right. I might just try and go right to start, oh, sorry, left to start with. And that seems to have got ridden, rid of that spot pretty well. Okay, so if you want to see that patch tool again, it's just hiding under the spot healing brush. So you do need to hold your mouse down on it to get it. And you just draw around a section that you want to fix up. For example, these little dots. And just drag it up to a smoother bit of skin. And it just blends them in. And it doesn't look too bad. Alright, so... I'm pretty happy with that. I know the skin isn't exactly perfect, but we've got rid of a majority of the spots. Okay, so that is looking good. Now the next thing I might do with the skin is smooth it out a little bit. Okay, this is uh, where it gets a little bit curly, a little bit tricky. So what we need to do here is we need to make a new layer. So over in our layers panel, we're going to hit this little plus sign here next to the trash can. And that makes layer 1. We're going to double click on the words layer 1 um, and we'll call it skin softening. Okay, This is what we're going to be doing to just level out the skin a little bit so it doesn't look as, um, I don't know, as coarse and grainy I suppose you could say. It's a bit of a weird one to describe. Okay, so what we're going to be doing next is grabbing our brush tool. So our brush tool is hiding below where our spot healing brush was. We've got a little paint brush. I just want you to grab that. Now at the top where you've got the size, this little circle here, make sure you've got yourself a soft round brush, which is hiding in the general brushes section. Yours might look a little bit different to mine, but make sure you've got soft round selected. Next thing I want you to do is turn the hardness down to 0%. Okay, here's the hardness here. Yours will probably be set on something different to mine, so just make sure it goes down to 0%, which is going to make it a very soft brush. Uh, once we click out of that, we've got some more options along the top here in our properties bar. I'm going to leave the opacity at 100%, but the flow over here I'm going to turn down. I'm going to turn it right down to like 1%. Okay, so when we actually click and drag around our page here, um, not a lot of paint is going to come out onto the model's face. And that's basically it for now. So what we're going to do is get our brush size, I don't know, roughly around there. We're going to start with the forehead, so I might zoom in a little bit here. And we're going to pick up a colour that is similar to her forehead and then just paint it on top. So the way we pick a colour is we use this little eyedropper tool. And if we go and click on her forehead somewhere, you'll see that that colour of her skin is now selected down here in our palette. Okay. And we can now grab the brush tool again and just very carefully just start clicking quickly around um, her forehead. You can even click and drag a little bit. Now every few clicks, I want you to hold the Alt key on your keyboard and that will bring the eyedropper tool up again, just as a shortcut. And select a new area of her face. And that's going to change that skin color a little bit. And I'm just going to click and drag and keep just painting little sections of her face at a time. And I'll keep pressing the Alt tool, uh, sorry, the Alt key to just highlight different sections. And I'm just going to paint over them. Now it doesn't look like I'm doing much here at the moment, but trust me, we are getting a little bit of flow out of that brush. And it's slowly softening her skin. So you've got to just keep sampling different skin tones. So hold Alt, sample that section. You can change your brush size if you want. And just click and drag across different sections to very slowly and carefully soften her skin. Now once we've done a little bit there, I know it doesn't look like I've done much, but if I hide the skin softening layer, you can just see it changing colour. Okay, so it is working. Um, what I also like to do is change the blend mode. So we're going to blend this paint in with her forehead and we're going to choose, you can see all the different blend modes, luminosity right at the bottom. Okay, that seems to be the best one from my experience. So if I show and hide that layer, you can start to see her skin softening out. We don't want to do it too much so it looks fake, so just be careful with this. You don't want to go too crazy. 
Uh, we've got a few pigmentation issues over here that will need to be blended a little bit, but yeah, let's do the best you can. So I'm just going to keep doing that around on her face and her shoulders until I get a fairly smooth looking face. Again, I will fast forward the video now, just so you don't have to sit here and watch me do it. And I'll see you once I have finished holding Alt and selecting a color and then just carefully coloring that section in. And I'll keep doing that all the way around her face. So I'll see you shortly. All right, so we're back again now, and as you can see, the skin is looking that little bit smoother now. If I was to hide this skin softening layer, just by hitting the little eye symbol here, you can see a slight difference. I know it's not much, but it has, I reckon, dramatically improved the look of the skin. Now, you could go around doing that all day till you got it um, looking really good, but just to save time in this video, that's as far as I'm going to go with the skin adjustments. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll probably make it a little bit darker. Actually, I won't try make it too dark yet. I might actually do her eyes and lips first. Then we'll look at the brightness of the overall image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the model editor layer. Okay, and on that layer, I'm going to zoom in again near her eyes. Now what I want to do here is just make the color in her eyes pop a little bit more. So we need to select the darker colors in her eyes there. To do that, I'm going to use the quick selection tool. Okay, so that is hiding in the fourth tool down in your toolbox. If you hold your mouse down on it and select quick selection tool, what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag over the eyeballs. Now first of all, you might need to adjust your brush size. So you can change that up here. You need to make it pretty small, or you can use your right and left um, square brackets as well to make your brush size bigger and smaller. So I am going to simply click on the blue area until it selects most of the eye. Now mine's selected a little bit too much, so what I need to do now is hold the Alt key and then click on those bits I don't want selected, and it will start to deselect them for me. So remember I just want the darker colour bit. That's looking pretty good there now. All right, so that's got most of that part of the eye selected. What we're going to do now is just pop over to the other one and just click and drag around that as well. Now, if it selects too much again, which it has in my case, I'm just going to hold Alt and just click in the bits that I don't want selected. Whoops. If you do deselect too much, just go back and click on the bits you want selected, and eventually you'll get both eyes selected like so. Now with the eyes, all we're going to do is we're going to increase the satura saturation. The saturation is basically how vibrant colors are in the image. So I'm going to go up to my image menu and adjustments, and I'm going to select hue and saturation. And from here, make sure you've got the little preview box turned on so you can see the changes you make. And you can see if I adjust this saturation slider, the eyes do some pretty crazy things. If we go all the way to the left, it sucks the color out of the eyes, but if we go all the way to the right, it adds a lot of color to the eyes. So you gotta be careful with this. You don't want too much saturation here. So I'm gonna bump it up probably about 10 steps at a time just to see how it's looking. She's got fairly dark blue eyes in this image, so what I can do is actually play with the hue to adjust that blue. If I wanna make it even darker, or a little bit greeny kind of colored, Play around with that, you can even go greens and reds and blues and all sorts of weird colors, but we want it to look realistic. So I'm just going to drop it maybe back one or two on the hue and turn that saturation up. I'll go about 20% for now. And if you uncheck and check that preview box, you can get an idea on what her eyes are doing. Actually, probably looks a little bit fake there, so I'll just bring it back over here. So I might go minus 10 for the hue and plus 30 for the saturation and click on OK. 
Once you click OK, you just get rid of the selection tool there by going to Select and Deselect, and you can see the difference in her eyes. If you want to click on this visibility, um, toggle the visibility of this model edited layer, you can get a glimpse of what the eyes are doing there. I'll just zoom in a bit more. So you can see we just lightened them up a bit and made that kind of aqua blue color pop out a bit. So it's a little bit more unique, that eye color, and it does sort of grab your attention when looking at it. Feel free to play around with the colors a little bit more and add a bit more of a punch to it by upping the saturation if you would like. But I do want to keep it looking somewhat realistic. Now the next thing I'm going to do, still on this model edited layer, is I'm going to make her lips stand out a little bit better. So again, we need to zoom in on this section and using our quick selection tool, we need to click on these lips and try to select them as closely as possible. Um, it's going to be quite tricky because the lips aren't too far off that actual skin color. So you'll need to go around pressing Alt some of the way just to deselect bits. And make sure you're clicking to get all those pinkish parts on her lips there. I reckon that's got it fairly well selected, maybe a little bit more just down the bottom here. There we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so with the lips selected, all we're going to do now is just go to Image and Adjustments again, and this time I'm going to go to the Color Balance. Okay, with the Color Balance, all you need to do here is play around with the sliders to get a color you want. So I'm going to just add a bit of red to her lips. You don't want to go all the way because it'll look fake, but just add a little bit of red. Maybe a little bit of pink wouldn't hurt too. Uh, I don't think the bottom slide is going to do much for us unless you want a bit of a purple tinge, but I might leave the blue as it is and just add a little bit of pink and red. Feel free to use the preview button here to see the difference between the original and the newly added color. So remember, don't go too crazy here. You are trying to keep it looking realistic, so I'm just going to add a little bit on either side and click on OK. Now I'm going to zoom back and press Control D to remove my selection just to check those lips. That doesn't look too bad to me. It doesn't look too fake, I don't think. Um, if you do think it looks fake, you can always undo it by pressing Control Z and just go back and apply your color balance again and just have a little bit of a play around. I just get the feeling it was a little bit too much, so I'll just tone it down a bit. There we go, so that looks a bit better. So you can see it's not a great deal of difference, but her lips do pop out a little bit more with that tinge of pink and red added in. Um, something else that's bothering me at the moment is her eye. She's got this little black bit coming down here. Whoops, it could be an eyelash or something, but using the spot removal tool, I might just try and tidy that up a little bit and see if it's going to work. Yeah, that'll do. Alright, so we've got the eyes looking good, the lips are looking good, the skin's looking pretty good. Um, some things we might do now is just adjust um, the overall look, or colour, sorry. So what I might do is go up to Image and, oops, I've got to select the Model Edited Layer, and go to Image Adjustments, and we can play around with the levels to adjust how bright or dark the image is. You've got three little levers here you can play around with. I'm just going to pull the first little lever here down to the right a little bit to make things a little bit darker. You can see it, if you go too far it just looks weird, so just drop it a little bit to the right. Play around with the other one on the far right. This is the lights in the image, so the highlights. Um, we probably don't want to go any lighter, so we might leave that as it is. And these are the mid-tones, so in between the really dark and light colors, you've got mid-tones, and you can play around with them as well. I might just lower that a little bit. So it just slightly darkens the image up a little bit. So hit the preview button again just to compare the difference between the two of those. I think that looks pretty good uh, as it is. Um, something else we might be able to adjust is the hue and saturation again. This time we're doing it to the whole image. And if we just drop that saturation ever so slightly, because um, I think at the moment it's probably a little bit too full on, if we drop it maybe 5%, so saturation minus 5, just tones down those colors a little bit. Very hard to see, but 
maybe a little bit further, maybe minus 8. If you hit the preview button, you might be able to see it's not quite as intense, the overall image color now, if we adjust that um, saturation. Okay, now if you want, you can also, I guess somewhat, give your model a bit of a tan. So to do that and give her a tan, what you need to be doing is going, or oh, making sure you've got the model edited layer selected, and then we're going to head up to our image menu, go to adjustments, and just choose the photo filter. Now from here, you've got a list of different filters you can add to your image. We're going to start with the warming filter, which is actually what we're going to be using today. But you can have a look at the other ones, cooling filters, which kind of add some blue tones to the image. And you've got all the other different colored filters that you can add to give it a different look. But we're going to keep, um, we're going to stick with the first one, the warming filter. And just play around with the density. I think 25% is a little bit too much because she does come across as a bit too orange. If you uncheck the preview box, you can get a bit of a glimpse of what the um, warming filter is doing exactly. So I might just drop it 10% to about 15%. And if we turn that preview on and off, you can see it just warms up her skin tones a bit and makes it look like she's got a little bit of a tan. So we'll click OK on that. And that's pretty much our image done for this video. I know there's a lot of other things you could do, though, like adding some eye makeup or tidying up the eyebrows a little bit. You could also get rid of this deodorant patch if you wanted to down the bottom. Uh, but that's all up to you, and you can follow some other tutorials if you would like to learn that. But for now, I think we've done a good job at smoothing her skin out, enhancing her eye color, her lip color, and get rid of, get, getting rid of all of those different spots. If you want to actually see the before and after, what I would do is just quickly go over to your layers panel and highlight by holding shift and clicking on those two layers um, and then merging them together. So there's an option to merge those two layers that we've been working on today. I might call that layer model edited. So we've got an edited layer and an original layer. And if you just toggle the visibility here, you can see the original, you can see the edited. I don't think it looks too fake. We've kept those colors fairly simple. And that's looking like a much bigger improvement over the original image. All right, so that will do us. When you're finished, make sure you go to File. And if you would like to come back and edit this with the different layers, you can go to Save As and Save as a PSD file. Um, that's a large file, but if you're fully finished, what I want you to do is just simply go to File and Export As. You've got a few options that are going to appear here. I'd probably save it as a JPG, so a JPEG file. And just bump the quality up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go with 7 because it's not overly large. And there's a button down, the some, down there somewhere that says Export. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, the edited image. And click Save. Or Export, sorry. And that's it. So I will see you in the next video tutorial.